a proper review of the Ibanez Pier. This guitar came from Guitar Guitar and it's the first order I made from them and the speed of delivery was remarkable. So I'll unbox the guitar while I introduce the review. And the reason I've called this video a proper review of the Ibanez Pier is because when I was looking into this guitar I went on YouTube and looked at the reviews that came up and they were all people trying to show off and just talking about themselves. So I thought it really needs to have a proper review where you look at the guitar and the details of what you'll be buying if you bought one of these. Right, let's get back to what you see. The guitar is single boxed but that's really not important because as you can see inside the guitar's in a hard Ibanez case. And you can tell by the fact that the box has been opened and resealed that they've obviously inspected it before sending it out, which is a really good thing. I'm sure some of my subscribers and people who've seen my other videos will remember the Fender Telecaster. That came pretty shocking condition considering it had just come from the factory. The case is a really nice one with a deep Ibanez logo on the front of it. And the latches have a really solid click so you feel safe picking it up and moving around. You know the guitar's not going to move inside and it's not going to spring open. However, there's no locks on the latches if that's important to you. The handle is very solid as well and it's riveted firmly into place. And on the bottom of the case there's four metal studs to prevent the case from dragging on the ground when you pick it up and put it down and also to protect the hinges and as well as that the hinges seem very solid so all in all the case is a really good one and I could see it lasting a good few years even in regular use I guess it's just a sign of the time that even though they advertise everywhere and push the fact that the guitar is made in Japan the case is obviously made in China Right, let's open it up and take a look at the guitar. And as I mentioned earlier, the latches are really positive and strong. And lifting the lid, you get bombarded by colour. I chose the Sundew Gold one for a change, because my gem is white. So I didn't want another white Ibanez. And because the colours are so intense, of the case and the guitar, this is a photograph that I've colour corrected with what I'm seeing in front of me now, so this is about as close as you'll get to the actual colour. I was a little concerned because a metallic gold guitar can look like some reject from the 70s, but it is metal flake, but very fine metal flakes, so it's quite subtle. And the gold is quite subdued, so it's quite classy. I'm a little bit older, so if you get a guitar with too much colour, you just look like a pillock. So this I can get away with, without looking like I'm going through a midlife crisis. The guitar fits absolutely tightly into the case, so there's no movement there if you're moving the case around. And probably the only way you can get the guitar out is by using the provided cutaways in the foam around the neck. Right, I'll put the guitar back for now and we'll have a look at the case candy before we look at the guitar. And the first thing we've got is the Ibanez maintenance manual. And this is in 10 languages and it just gives you a couple of pages of basic maintenance and how to set things like the intonation and the action. And a big yellow safety supplement fell out of the manual and it was to warn you not to trap your fingers in the magnetic back plate. So I can't wait to see how good that is. Moving on then we've got another piece of card underneath the headstock and this is a little bit of a personal message from Steve I himself and basically it's running through the differences between the Gen 7V and the Pier. And there's a lot in there for this video, and some people would find it really boring. So I've got it on the screen now, 
if you want to read that you can pause the video here and as I've done this video in 4k it should be quite clear and you should be able to read it for yourself. Moving on from that now then we'll have a look what's in the storage pocket and we've got a few bits of official paperwork the checkoffs of uh, quality control and stuff and we've got like a pencil case full of goodies so let's have a look what's inside there interestingly this is the first mention i've seen to team jcraft which they used to push quite hard with the uh, gem 7 and it's even got a team jcraft sticker on the back of the headstock and for some reason the whole team jcraft identity has been dropped with the uh, pier this is the first reference i've seen to it In this little bag then, there's some really good stuff. They've included two tremolo bars, one the standard one, and one is the lightweight one, which is kind of strange. We've got spare bushes for the end of the tremolo bar, and a multi-tool for doing all the jobs you need to do on the guitar. And as well as all that, there's a separate Allen key in a little bag of its own. It's a really nice touch to have the choice between the two tremolo bars because I remember seeing pictures of this guitar on the internet and thinking that lightweight tremolo bar is really ugly. So to have the choice between which one to use, it's a real bonus. And now I've handled both the tremolo bars, I think I'd probably go for the light one anyway. And it's not for the weight, it's for the fact it's warmer to hold sounds strange doesn't it but the steel one is really cold and hard whereas the lightweight one is really pleasant to the touch the multi-tool is another really nice touch and i've never had anything like this with any guitars i've had you usually just get a couple of allen keys in a small bag even if you play a few grand for a guitar that's all they give you so to go to that little bit of extra effort to give you a multi-tool that's a really nice touch and it keeps them tidy as well so you haven't got allen keys rattling around your case and the multi-tools got six hex drives or allen keys uh, between 1.5 mil and 5 mil it's got a flathead screwdriver and two different sizes of cross ply screwdrivers it's got a measure for doing things like your action and it's got a small wrench so it's pretty comprehensive. Right, let's move on to the important part, which is the guitar itself. But just before I do that, I'm going to try putting the gem in the pier case. And I'm doing this to see if they've changed the body shape or if it's the same. And as you can see, the pier is exactly the same body shape as the gem, even though they've done some refinements. The second test I want to do is to check that the monkey grip can still be used because looking at it in the picture it just looks like a guitar embellishment and not a useful thing but as you can see I can get four fingers in there quite comfortably. The second one is an embellishment and you can actually feel on the inside of it that they've not sanded it down properly and it's quite rough. And around the grip they've shaped the body slightly front and back and I think they've done this to make it more comfortable to grip but it also adds uh, another layer to the aesthetics and it's a really nice touch. Right, let's go to the headstock and work our way down the guitar. And the headstock is the classic Ibanez gem shape and the gold on gold with black touches really does look sexy. And on the gold version, the actual Ibanez logo itself is a kind of holographic effect so as you move it in the light it changes colour. The machine heads are gotter and they're gold coloured but they're the same machine heads on all four different coloured versions of the pier and these are really good machine heads. I've never known anyone to have a technical issue with them. However even if they were poor ones it wouldn't make any difference because if you use locking nut correctly you hardly ever need to use the machine heads only to change the strings and do the initial tune and maybe 
tweak the strings when you run out of thread at the tremolo end. The neck is a five piece neck and there's no joints between the neck and the headstock so the stripes run right the way through to the end of the guitar. And when you first look at the back of the neck you think where they're holding on the locking nut there's no strength to the neck. However, I've never known anyone to break one of these, so they must be pretty strong. The neck is a bolt-on neck with countersunk bolts, and the fretboard is rosewood with the pier blossom inlay, which is quite similar to the Tree of Life from the gem, but there are quite substantial differences. Here's the two patterns alongside each other so you can compare them, but don't try comparing the colours because the colours of the white pier will be the same as the gem. However, with the three coloured piers, the neck inlay represents a part of the different colour schemes. So there's an element of envy green, panther pink and sundew gold in each of the inlays. And also I should point out that in the first year, the three coloured piers are a limited edition. Though, I have to admit, I don't know how many they're limited to. The frets are jumbo frets, and the quality of finish is incredible. They're really well finished off, and they've been really well fitted. And combining this with the quality of the fingerboard, and the inlay, and the neck, this is probably one of the best necks I've ever felt. The pictures I'm showing here are at extreme magnification and they show up every tiny little blemish. And even at this magnification, the frets look good. It does bring out the fact that the wood is a little dry and needs a bit of treatment, as every guitar just coming out of the factory needs that. I guess it's mainly due to the amount of dust that would be knocking around in a factory environment. Also here, I'll point out that the top four frets are scalloped out. So fret 21, 22, 23 and 24 have been scalloped so they sound clearer. The neck is thin and fast and the headstock angles back slightly and the neck is finished in satin. However this satin does go shiny after you've played the guitar for a while as you can see here with my gem. Right. Let's move on to the body now. And we've already looked at various aspects of the body. For example, it's exactly the same shape as the gem. However, it's got new features and the grip has changed. However, there's a lot more very subtle changes in that the edges are all rounded off. And this makes the guitar feel so much smoother and nicer to play. And if you play in a studio or sat down, you'll find the guitar won't dig into your leg anywhere near as much as the old gem did. These changes are so subtle it's quite hard to show them in a photograph or video. But I noticed that the place where you could notice the differences most clearly was on the cutaway horn. So if you look at this with the gem and the pier you can see just how different they really are. The edges on the pier are rounded, whereas on the gem they were sharp. And of course the body is made of alder. Dun, 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 dun. And now we reach the back plate with the health warning. And it looks safe enough, but pretty ugly. I assume this is a protective sheet of plastic on it. Uh, let's take it off and have a look. The metal back plate is held on by a strong magnetic strip and if anything the magnetic strip looks like it might come away in time. I'll have to see how that pans out. And as you can see there's a white plastic film stuck onto the metal surface to protect it. So I'll see if I can get that off. This plastic film is really stuck down tight. Hopefully once I get a corner up, the rest of it will come off relatively easily. Thankfully, 
as I thought it would, it's coming off a lot more easily now. And I can see why it was there now, because that metal surface is quite shiny. And uh, scratches will probably show up on it. The magnetic strip is quite strong, so do be careful with your fingertips. But once you've put the back plate back on, the guitar looks infinitely better without that white film on. Looking towards the tail end of the guitar, you'll notice that the output jack is angled towards the strap button. And this is so you can channel the lead around the strap, and that way you take the weight off the plug and the socket. However, if you play without a strap sat down, you'll find this can be a bit of a nuisance, and I've actually made a little loop to go onto the strap button to protect my leads. Looking at the selector switch and the knobs, the selector switch is the standard old school strut style selector switch with five positions and the knobs are nicely annulled gold ones with either tiger eye or some form of a gate along the top. How the selector switch is wired is quite interesting. Working from the bridge we have the humbucker. Then the first position we share one of the coils from the humbucker with the central pickup. Then we go over to the centre pickup, which is a single coil. Then the fourth position, we're sharing the centre pickup with one of the humbuckers from the neck. And finally, you're on the neck humbucker pickup. Aesthetically, I love these new pickups. I think they look really great. And they kind of remind me of a steampunk look. If you can imagine these pickups on a steampunk guitar, they wouldn't look out of place. Something that surprised me that wasn't clear in the pictures I'd seen of this guitar is the fact that the pickups aren't high gloss gold. They're kind of an anodized look. So I don't know if this will be more hard wearing, but it's not what I was expecting. Saying that, I'm not disappointed. They look really great on the guitar, and I'd imagine they'll be a lot easier to keep clean. And from a technical point of view, they're made by DiMarzio. Obviously, the bridge and the neck pickup are both humbuckers, which are ceramic magnets. And the centre pickup is single coil, and it's an Alnico magnet. Here's some of the technical information, so you can pause the video here and take a look. Otherwise, you can find it all on the Ibanez website. You just need to search for the pier. Something that did surprise me but I didn't notice straight away, is the fact that they've changed the tremolo style. And the tremolo system on the gem was the low pro style. So it was more or less flush with the body and the tuners didn't stick out. However, this has gone back almost to the 90s style where the tuners are quite pronounced. I don't know why they've gone back this way. I would have thought it was a step backward, but it must be more stable or something. Bearing in mind, this is a Steve Vai Signature Series guitar. He must have chosen this style of tremolo for a good reason. And something I nearly forgot to mention, and that is the fact that the volume control has a switchable high pass filter. And this is because on most guitars, when you turn the volume down, you start to get a lot more mushy bass and you lose the top end. And with this filter, it brings the top end back, so that as you lower the volume, you don't lose the tone of the guitar. This is a passive effect, so it's not taking batteries or being powered by anything. And what this means is, it's not actively boosting the treble, it's holding back the bass more than anything. And theoretically, it shouldn't have any effect at full volume, but I'll check this out in a minute. Right, I'll just do some minor tests so you can see that everything works properly. Firstly then, I'll try the tone control and I'll try all three pickups starting with the neck. Now the middle pickup. Now the bridge pickup.
Well, that's excellent. It sweeps uniformly throughout and it has a really nice effect on the sound. You'll notice that I've plugged this into an old Viamp Pro and that's because I'm very familiar with the sounds this produces and I'm still not familiar with the sounds of the new units I've got. Now, I'll just try the high pass filter to see what difference it makes at low volumes. Honestly, it's very subtle, but if you're looking for a specific sound, this will help you find it. Here's a test between the gem and the pier on the neck pickup and the neck middle pickup and comparing the sounds. Gem, neck pickup. <laughs> pier, neck pickup. Gem, neck and middle pickup. Pier, neck and middle pickup. Well, there's definitely a difference. So if you expect exactly the same sound from the pier as you get from the gem, you're not going to get it. Conclusion and really bad news. Whilst most of the construction quality is outstanding, they've cocked up on one major point. Either the tremolo is out of line, or the neck is out of alignment. What this means is that the strings don't sit in the centre of the fingerboard. And I only discovered this when I was at the end of the video starting to do the tests. When I tried to play anything above the 12th fret on the top E string, it would flick off the edge of the fret because it was so close and it made it very difficult to play. Sometimes with an issue like this, you can sort it by loosening the neck and resetting it so that the neck lines up with the tremolo. However, because this is a brand new guitar, I'm not even going to try that. I'll just send it back. However, there was another issue. The mount for the tremolo bar is loose. So I thought, I'll tighten that up, so I did. But it came loose three times. And if you leave it loose, every time you touch it, it makes a loud click that resonates through the body. So that needs to be sorted as well. In fairness, if this was the only issue, I'd just tighten down on it really hard or put a little bit of Loctite there. Either way, you'd sort the issue. But with the out of line strings, this guitar's got to go back. Well, I'm really sorry to end this video on a bad note, especially as it's an Ibanez, because I'm a bit of an Ibanez fan. But if you want to see the end of the story, please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified when I upload it. Or if you want to see some guitar lessons, go over to my channel, and there's some playlists of short guitar courses. Otherwise, you can find them at www.ebooksforguitar.com. And all the courses are completely free. You don't even have to leave your email address. Just watch the courses. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll play you out with a little bit of improvisation I was doing when I discovered I kept pushing the strings off the edge of the frets. An important update came in just as I was about to render this video and the guitar's now sorted. So if you want to see that video, it will be coming up as a part two. So again, thank you for watching and here's the tune. <laughs>